Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the discussion on blood grouping will remain incomplete if we do not talk about multiple alleles because this is something very different which we saw in case of the ABO blood grouping. Before that, whatever we have discussed, in most of the cases you saw that a gene has two alleles. Now, those genes which have more than two alleles, they are known as multiple alleles and, and blood group, that is the ABO blood group is a very important example of multiple alleles. So this also, this is also a non-Mendelian inheritance pattern because as per Mendel's laws of inheritance, he never spoke of multiple alleles. He always said that one gene can have only two alleles. That is what was told by Mendel. But later it was found that it is not necessary. One gene can even have more than two alleles and all such uh, alleles are, fall under the category of multiple alleles. So there are genes for which more than two different alleles exist, as I said just now. So the best example were the, was the multiple alleles of the ABO blood group where you have three alleles, IA, IB and I. And here you can actually see both the dominance, that is complete dominance as well as co-dominance. So if you compare IA with I, it is uh, complete dominance. If you compare IA with IB, it is co-dominant. So both the dominance is also seen in ABO blood grouping. Another example is the coat color in rabbits. In rabbits, if you see a uh, quite a few variety of rabbits are actually seen, especially the coat color. In some of the rabbits, the color of the coat is gray. Some of them it is uh, dark gray. In some of them it is completely white. So the co coat colors are different. And it has been seen that the gene which is responsible for coat color, that gene has got four alleles. So even three is not the max number. So there are genes which have more than three alleles, more than four alleles. So for this rabbit, the coat color in rabbit, it has four alleles that is C, capital C, small c, 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 H and C, A. So let us see what are each of them. So capital C. So capital C is the dominant trait. So the, or the dominant allele, whatever you call it. So the capital C is for fully colored coat. So here the coat is fully colored. So that is capital C. So if you talk about the small c, the small c is white. That is completely white. So this is the recessive allele. So this is the recessive one. So this will get displayed only if it is inherited, the small c is inherited from both the parents. So here it is going to be completely white for a small c. C, C, H, that is going to be the chinchilla. C, H stands for chinchilla. And here this is going to be more dominant. This is going to be dominant, but it will be less dominant than capital C. So this is how the color of the coat would be light grayish color. So this is how the chinchilla rabbit would be, right? So this is also dominant, but this is less dominant than capital C. And the last one that is C H. This is the Himalayan rabbit. So this is, this will have again the white colored coat, but if you look at the ears and the, the feet and all there, you have some blackish uh, border. So that is the difference between CH and C. So this CH is dominant. This is going to be dominant only on the recessive trait. Otherwise, it is being dominated by C, capital C and CCH. So basically, if you look at the order of dominance, which is the most dominant of all the traits, capital C is going to dominate everybody. So capital C is the most dominant. After that, the next dominant is going to be C, CH, that is the chinchilla rabbit. The next one is going to be C, H and finally the recessive one. So now you know, let us suppose if you have a, a genotype, say C, H, C, C, H. So what, what would be the phenotype? So the phenotype will be C, C, H because C, C, H is more dominating than C, H. Right? Similarly, if you have CHC, if this is the genotype, so what would be the phenotype? This is more dominating. So since this is more dominating, so this will dominate. 
so that is how it it works out so what i'm trying to say is there are quite a couple of genes where for which more than two alleles exist and this concept of multiple alleles also came after mendel so mendel's law mendelian laws of inheritance do not do not talk about multiple alleles so based on whatever we have discussed so far on dominance what do we get to know we got to know that there are all together three types of dominance one is complete dominance as given by mendel the next is incomplete dominance where uh, the two alleles blend with each other so they mix up to give up an intermediate phenotype and the third one is co-dominance where both the alleles equally dominate each other and as a result a mixed phenotype is obtained so let let us take a common example which will explain all the three so if you say that a red flower is being crossed with a yellow flower if if i talk about complete dominance complete dominance would say that this would give red flower because red is completely dominant over yellow so the yellow will become hidden and red will get expressed if we talk about incomplete dominance it will say that it will give an intermediate phenotype neither red nor yellow it will give something like orange right so that is incomplete dominance and if i talk about co-dominance it will say that both are going to dominate so it will have red colors it, it will also have yellow colors so some of the petals will be red in color and some of the petals will be yellow in color so this is all about dominance now Mendel was able to tell us about complete dominance. However, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, they came up later when other scientists performed a lot of experiments on, um, I mean, all, a lot of work on genetics, you can say. So this was all about the inheritance of one gene. So till now, we have discussed about the inheritance pattern, how traits get inherited or get, how traits get passed on from one generation to other generation with respect to one trait. We did not talk about two traits. So everywhere, we, if we talk, talked about the height, we only talked about tall and dwarf. If we talk about the seed color, we only talk about uh, green and yellow. If we talk about the flower color, we only talk about red and white or red and yellow. So that is what we have considered so far. But now we will make it little more complicated by talking about two traits. That is, we will see what happens when you have a plant which is tall at the same time it is with round seeds and you cross it with a plant which is dwarf and at the same time it has got wrinkled seeds so now we are actually considering two contrasting traits so everything all the calculations and everything will get thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.